I just picked those. And there's a Juneberry. They're not as tasty, they're kind of bland, so whatever. This would be a great place to catch a moose coming through. Beer to go get a drink. I thought I caught my biggest one yesterday. Or a walleye? No, a walleye sometimes. Or a hanging northern A strong one. Jeez. Wow, almost a full mile with uh, 40, 100 pounds on my shoulder and waist. Wow, seven o'clock in the morning, and I think I'm gonna go for a swim. <laughs> Actually, it's not that cold. This here, this is Thomas Lake. I'm gonna find a camp spot here and I'm gonna catch some lake trout. Even if it is the middle of summer and they're 70 feet deep, I'm gonna get me one. This is the south end of Thomas Lake. Okay, so I just let out my line, 100 feet down, started reeling up, and uh, <laughs> had something big on. I've been out here for like three minutes, maybe. There. Oh, look at that guy. Okay, so I was gonna go up to South Arm Knife Lake and up to the Canadian border and work that around. But it appears that the Canadian border in this open water is bringing way too much smoke in. So that cancels my route for going up that way. I'm gonna start heading east through this pass and then work my way south to get away from all the smoke. I can't too much. All right, I'm about to enter Pitfall Lake after this one. Uh, and as far as I know, no one's ever made it there. So even though my other PMA got canceled, 
and came up with a new one and I did get a permit for this as well. So this is where I chose to take out out of the whole bank. This is the only spot. This place is full of moose because nobody's ever back here. There's all moose poop right here. I mean, everywhere. So I gotta be really careful about moose here. Yeah. Okay, so I started down there. I'm at the top. Gotta go down to one bottom, then back up to another top, then down to a bottom. And I should be there, straight line. See if I can keep it straight, we'll see. All right. This is a faded moose path. Yeah, I'll have to bring the canoe through here. I have to find the thinnest trees to go through. Okay, it's been quite the journey. Quite the journey. But this is Pitfall Lake. Looks like a huge dam over here. Like it just goes vertical and just a little strip. That'll be cool to check out. That looks like a good camping spot. Looks really flat. And that looks like a heck of a drop off. So I'm guessing this is a deep lake. Oh man. I'm gonna spend a week here maybe. <laughs> okay, I made it to Pitfall. It's a very uh, steep cliff. So I put my gear down there. So even though this is longer, I'm gonna take this way. Along the way, I gotta look for a tree to set up camp because I don't think I'm gonna be able to take my canoe down here tonight. It just, uh, I took a few hours at least. I need to come back here, grab my gear, because I thought I was gonna bring my canoe, but no way. So I need to grab my gear and then take it over. And the trees I only see available are way over there. So I'm gonna go check that out now, I guess, before I go back for my food barrel. Okay, so I have no tips for how to navigate once you're at the top of the hill. Uh, and it's all bush like this. <laughs> Made my port with my food. <laughs> 60 pounds. Uh, three weeks worth. It was only supposed to be less than two weeks, but I canceled a lot of my trip because it was too much smoke up north. Uh, so, yeah, I made it to the primitive area. Uh, this is Cup Lake. Uh, my first trip, I put my backpack with all my gear on Pitfall Lake, which is actually quite a ways over there. But it's such deep drop-offs that it was hard to get the backpack to, and this is a lot easier. I'm going to bring the canoe here, which is actually further than Pitfall, but there's a creek or river that I should be able to follow through. It's very shallow right now, so we'll see how far I get on that. And also, those people that are against music and the Boundary Waters, you don't go to primitive areas. <laughs> At least not solo. So, if so, you'd be wanting some kind of music or something playing all the time to where you don't have to worry about walking up on a moose in this shit or a bear. I don't bring a knife, pointless. You're not gonna stab a bear to death. You're not gonna stab a moose to death. Bear spray is gonna piss off a bear if they're trying to defend a cub, which is like the only reason why it would attack you. And a moose, good luck even reaching up that high to spray it in its eyes and see if it stops. But uh, uh, not a firecracker, because those, those are illegal, but it's my trip wire for the bear barrel. Pretty sure if I set that off and start yelling at him, any black bear would run away. Moose? Oh, they might look at me weird and run me over still. So, Sid, I love you so much, babe. I love you so much. You too, Duke. All right, where's it at, huh? You said it's up above. Okay, so I made it to Pitfall Lake late last night in the dark. It wasn't fun. Yeah, it was quite a memory. I made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot. But I got something in my eye last night and uh, thought it would uh, be okay by morning. Hard going to sleep. And I uh, woke up in the morning and I've been resting it, trying to wash it out, trying to figure out how bad of an emergency this is. I couldn't see anything and now finally I think I see it. It's a thorn or some kind of piece of wood I think inside my eye 
and he's going through my eyelid and can you see the thorn coming out it's right there in the center so I gotta somehow peel back my eyelid use something for a mirror and use tweezers to get that out I don't know oh, setting up camp here and I just got done with uh my whole eye problem that I was super worried about and I just got stung in the face by something I don't know what it is you already make dinner here and uh and kind of I think I can see my lip damn I'm gonna take some Benadryl I think is uh I think I can feel my jaw swelling up now down here there's no bees around either so I mean I haven't seen a bee this whole trip I don't know what the hell it was. I mean, it didn't hurt. I didn't feel any kind of sting or pinch or nothing. I was actually in the middle of trying to catch a snake right up there while I was tying down one of those, but I know it's fact no damn snake jumped up on me. Okay, in case you're wondering how long it takes to bushwhack a trail, it took me four and a half hours to clear out a trail, oh, that's not good, again. <laughs> it took me four and a half hours to clear a trail for 20 minutes of walking. And every single time, I come out with so many twigs and so much shit in my hair, I should have brought my uh, skydiving skull cap. But man, if I'm gonna go bald before my wedding, my wife is, my fiance is gonna kill me. I don't even know if she'll marry me. But this is turning into a rag and it's only been a week. But it's been a week through bush whacking like straight up PMA. <laughs> strong to severe thunderstorms will affect the boundary waters canoe area wilderness this afternoon and tonight the storms will be capable of erratic and gusty winds of 30 to 70 miles per hour hail at half dollar size frequent cloud to ground lightning and locally heavy rainfall which may lead to localized minor flooding of creeks streams and low-lying areas Campers should take extra precautions in order to secure campsites and make a plan in case of severe weather. Check campsites for possible hazards, including standing dead trees or limbs, as well as low spots where water can pool. Move tents away from creeks and rivers in case of flash flooding. Prepare to protect yourself from large hail using sleeping bags or other padded lines. Okay, so I'm just taking up uh, camp from Pitfall. Not really much of a camp last night. I had to make an emergency camp because in the middle of the night my tarp ripped on me. I kind of expected it would with 35, 45 mile per hour winds it seemed. But it was a rough night to say the least. However, I did make it to Pitfall and I did everything I wanted here. I'm really happy, caught a few lake trout. This all would not have been if it wasn't for Roman. Now, the map got a little wet, but this is Roman's new map that he drew me, and this is how I found my way. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. This is where I started. Uh, I took it just pretty much a big loop, and then the PMA is off on this side. So, uh, I started, found grouse, uh, uh, tons of birch trees. Uh, this uh, ship thing, it was underneath the water, so I couldn't really see much of it, but it was there. And there's a little side lake. Uh, the mountains over there, so that's how I knew I was getting close to Pitfall. And here's Pitfall. So I haven't seen this uh, android looking guy. There's my boat, there's a the fishing spot, that's where I caught all the lake trout. There's the grouse. Now I have to go back through. And these two guys in their spaceship, uh, not really looking forward to seeing them. They, they don't look friendly, one has a gun, so should ask a little more about that, but. 10 years ago, starting out Boundary Waters, I thought I was a master. Five years ago, I figured, wow, I'm, uh, I know everything now. I mean, uh, headings, nothing's a problem. And now I, in the last few years, especially this year, I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know shit. There's a lifetime more to learn from these mistakes. And I only learn from mistakes, so I'm sorry, Sid. I love you, but there's gonna be a lot of shit. Three different uh, old growth systems, and there's one cliff. 
Uh, I'll explain that when we get to it. Oh. Okay, so what I present to you here is Nebic Lake. Okay. Here we go. Oh shit. I don't know if I can videotape at the same time. I don't know. How did I do this? That's what I did. Here we go. You can see the bear moves. Good, let me know. So all I see is the front of the canoe. Yeah. This is the fun part. I remember this. Okay, this is how I do this. Oh, I slip my head between there. Try not to get it to you myself. Uh, all right. Take a little break. But the longer break I take, the less fishing I get. So, let's go. Uh, due to the drought, uh, no rain, it requires now to go a lot of different places than when you would before. Instead of taking rivers and creeks, you have to take a lot of bogs. If you've never been in a bog, but you want to be in a bog, or you want to experience a bog, you don't have to. I'll do it for you. So this is what it's like for quite some time until you start sinking down in. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start sinking down in. I like to do it probably right up here. It sounds like the most fun. So first thing to prepare is take your shoes off so they don't get stuck in the water and the mud. And then you're like, oh shit, my shoe's gone. You learn from those mistakes pretty fast. Ah, okay. Yay. I've ever caught a fish like this. A uh, white fish, I think. This is a big fish. Really big fish. I went all the way around with my pole and caught the other line. I thought I was hung up for the longest time. Look at this. This is uh, maybe bigger than my last one. This is a huge pike. We just gotta give him time. Oh yeah. Oh, he's a big one. Oh, I barely got him too. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> this is probably like a 45 incher. Oh. Just gotta let him wear down. That's all. For her. Only the females get this big. There she is again. With that fucking line caught on it. Oh! So complacent. They're so ah, dang it. Okay. It's gotta be a big northern stand down below. Or that just staying on the bottom. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's a big northern. Okay, I got my slack tape. Isn't taking out any drag yet, but I can just tell because they're just like a weight. They don't really pull. They're just sinkers until they get really crazy. I can tell by the weight of him. He's 15 pounds or more. Ah, oh, there's the first time it takes it out. It's a good 10 pounds at least. At least 10 pounds. In the same spot here, the same spot, everything you see, I've caught five over the over 15 pounds. This will be one for for 10 pounds. Oh, 
kind of big. This is the same spot that I've cut all these other northern. But maybe the biggest walleye I've ever got. Never got over like a seven pound walleye. Oh, nice. I got a bleeder on that. No, you didn't. It's on the other side. Sweet. Good. There. Oh, yeah. That's 10 pounds. Same spot. Same spot. Sweet. Another big pike, I think. Yeah, that's fine. That's not big, but that's good. Jeez, that had been a good foot and a half. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a huge jump though. A lot of small mouth right here, huh? A lot of big ones. Little footballs. That's what you are. Maybe it's, yeah, that's, I can't see it. Am I dragging that set? Oh, I don't know, it's a northern. It's a big northern. Oh, that works out for me. <laughs> Got bit through that. Big northern came up, tried eating them. It's fresh too. Okay, I got a big northern on. You can tell how he stays down. How he's not even fighting because he's so big. Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> Look at that. So I'm just gonna let him. I just think. I don't know. I don't want him to get trapped. Oh no! Oh.
Whoa. Pretty close, man. Huge something. Oh, 